Wow, look at that. Clouds in the sky in Southern California. It's been very rainy, very cold, and very windy down here lately. And I've been inside looking at a giant stack of papers and a giant stack of math I'm gonna have to do to do my taxes. Whoa. I was inside wishing I could be somewhere tropical, somewhere warm, someplace kind of exotic. And it suddenly dawned on me, there is a place like that nearby. And I haven't popped in for a while. So it's time to return to the simulated tropical paradise of the one and only Oceanic Arts. It's tiki time. Oh, yes. In the tiki, 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 tiki room. In the tiki, 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 tiki room. All the birds sing words and the flowers croon. In the tiki, 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 tiki. Tiki, tiki room. Would you look at the size of this tiki warehouse? If you guys have never seen like that mini documentary that I did on Oceanic Arts years ago, the TLDR is that the owners of this place, Leroy Schmaltz and Bob Van Oosting, have been supplying the world with a little Polynesian pop. They provide nautical nonsense in various forms. Mostly they're famous for carving, designing, and selling tiki's all over the world, including to the Polynesian Islands. And they still have warehouses full of nautical decor, tropical decorations that they ship around the world, including to places like Walt Disney World's Polynesian Village and Resort. And here locally, this warehouse is full of all kinds of stuff you can rent for parties. Dude, look at all these tiki's. Wow. Look at all these faces. That's amazing. So many different sizes, so many different shapes, so many different expressions. Hey, wait a minute. It's George. Oh, I almost didn't see you there, dude. You're blending in with the tiki's. Whoa. Don't break the bamboo rafts, George. Would you look at the eyes of some of these big boys? This is so impressive. Someday I would like to have a big backyard and own all of these. Dude, this is your first trip to Oceanic Arts? Yeah. What do you think so far? It's a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be, and there's a lot more stuff than I thought there was going to be. That's what... Okay. They actually don't just rent out props for luau's and backyard parties. A lot of these things get rented out for films such as Pirates of the Caribbean, Gilligan's Island, stuff like that. Hollywood comes a call in at Oceanic Arts quite often. As a matter of fact, even the creators of SpongeBob SquarePants and the animators and stuff sometimes come here for inspiration, take pictures of different stuff, and incorporate some of these designs into bikini bottom. What were you gonna say, George? I can see why. Why? Ooh, this is pretty cool. There's a tiki over here with a hat. Kinda reminds me of you, George. Wow. Now this is awfully bamboozling. Dude, look at this. You know Tom Hanks wishes he had this when he was on that <laughs> island with Wilson. He could have built one heck of a raft. Look, there's one of my favorite props in Oceanic Arts. They used some of that thatch paneling over there when they did those Return to Gilligan's Island films. And look at that right there. It's a life thingy. A hoopty what's it? The preserver thing with the... It's a lifesaver. From the SS Minnow. Dude, look at all the... Just the sheer supplies of stuff here. You could get into so many tropical projects with this stuff, George. Think of the possibilities for your backyard, your breezeway, your kitchen. Your tiki bar your restaurant, your old folks home. Actually, dude, I would love to live in an old folks home that was decorated with stuff from here. That would be exciting. Look at all this nautical nonsense. Oh, where's the rum gone? Doesn't all this stuff just make you want to build your own pirate ship, dude? Avast there, there be George ahead. Oh, where's the rum gone? Oh wait, it's gone right here. Don't worry, George, there's plenty of rum. And I know you're straight edge, but look, the rum is straight edge too. Straight edge rum, just for you, buddy. A lot of this stuff actually comes from real ships and stuff. Like, look at the size of this rope. This is a man, George-sized rope. You can pull some heavy loads with this. You want to help me, George? No? Look at this old vintage life vest, dude. You should put that on. <laughs> I'm not going to put that Why on. Why not? You look I'm like Marty I'm, McFly. I'm buoyant enough. You're buoyant enough. <laughs> oh, these are new. I haven't seen these before, man. These are awesome. Wait a minute. Do me a favor. No. Look to your left really quick. Just look, no. just look no. to your left. George, <laughs> there's a strong resemblance there, dude. Strong jaws. One of the cool things here is a lot of times when they did a job, say, 30, 40, 50 years ago, and then the place that they did the job for will close down, they'll actually get some of the stuff back when the place closes. So you can find a lot of weird odds and ends in here. Some very strange pieces. Oh, look at this. I definitely need this if I start my own tobacco barn. Someday when I retire, Justin's Tobacco Barn. 
But look at this up here. Welcome to the annual Dutch picnic. I kind of want to get that sign and put that in my kitchen. Now, George, I know you don't smoke, but if you ever were thinking of smoking, probably safer to smoke this giant wooden cigar that isn't real, okay? That'll protect you. No side effects except for splintery gums. Yeah. Plenty gums. Yeah, I really should quit. One of my favorite things about coming here is always talking to good old Leroy Schmaltz. The king of the tiki carvers. What's really crazy about that stuff is it seems counterintuitive, but all this tiki pop stuff that happened in the 40s and the 50s and the 60s actually helped save the authentic cultures. By the time that Leroy and Bob were sailing the seven seas, looking for inspiration for the Polynesian pop movement, missionaries and a lot of other factors had killed off native arts in a lot of different places. And it was actually the interest in tiki bars and things like the tiki room that rekindled a lot of different islands. Passion for their original art and their original culture, which in a lot of places had been virtually wiped out. So it's kind of strange that art that imitates other art can bring back the original art, you know what I mean? Anyway, we got here kind of late in the day. Oceanic Arts closes pretty early. So they're gonna be closing up shop pretty soon. But I just wanted to pop in here. You know what's weird is that this warehouse is actually very cold. I don't think there's any kind of heat in here. But all the tropical decor makes it feel warmer than outside when I think it's actually colder in here than outdoors. All right, time to leave the real life tiki room behind. But there's actually a place across the street that might prove pretty entertaining. All right, time to say goodbye. You Coming with me uh, across the street, George? No, I can't. Why? Sam's baseball practice. Uh, Everyone loves baseball more than me. All right, basically literally right across the street is another gem of Whittier, California that I try to visit whenever I'm in the area. King Richard's Antique Center. There's a lot of antique stores right down by my house in Orange. But none of them are quite this massive. Dude, would you look at that? of this place. King Richard's is massive because it takes up the entirety of one of Southern California's old citrus packing plants. This is one of those huge warehouses where they would bring all the oranges and lemons and limes and stuff like that. Pack them into crates, put them on trains, and ship them all over the country. Southern California barely, barely grows any citrus now. We're more into farming condominiums, things like that. But it's a huge, no pun intended, part of our history. Dude, look at this place. You you never know what you can find in a place like this. Look at it, some sick weaponry. Nancy Reagan's dress. Ooh, even a giant bathtub. Ladies. Ooh, look at this, with the blast shield down, I can't even see. How am I supposed to fight? Your eyes can deceive you. Don't trust them. Ah, look at this. It is a Mickey Mouse tile from Germany. George had to leave a little early so he could go get his glove for his son's baseball practice. But if he had just come here, he could have picked up a new old glove. Mm, smell the glove. Whoa, look at this. That is pretty cool right there. Love finding old stuff like that. It's like a giant party in here. <laughs> Ooh, I love seeing old vintage Star Wars action figures, but check this out over here. A vintage Muhammad Ali action figure. Um, can someone lend the champ a hand? Oh, look at this. Look at this old Cabbage Patch Kids doll, and look at that crazy packaging. This is what I was talking about in that video we did at Hobby City. Look how crazy and elaborate this was. These things were all the rage in the 80s. Any of you kids know what these are? You mean you have to rewind? It's like a baby's toy. Did you guys know the real life Annabelle, the thing that the whole movie series was based on, was a raggedy Ann doll? I could never believe it until I saw this. Now that's something that could definitely be possessed. Oh. Ooh, look at these antiques over here. I used to have these neighbors from Oaxaca. They had a huge cactus garden with literally probably a hundred of those little statues. They love those things. I love this coffee table. Panther table by Odeon. 60% of the time, this works. Every time. I love this right here. Star Roto Robot. That looks like a lot of fun. Ooh, look at this log cabin syrup. Ooh, or how about this very majestic radio? That's pretty good, but so is this. The animated E.T. alarm clock. Wake up. I'm actually running into a lot of robots in here. Look, there's Roby the Banker right under this weird 
cone dispenser, I'm guessing? Have you enjoyed a cone today? Ooh, look at this booth of Tesla lamps, I think they're called. Someone is making some very unique stuff. I've got an idea. Dude, some of the displays in here are really cool. I almost forgot there's an upstairs and a downstairs to this place. See what I'm saying? This place is massive. It's kind of confusing the first time you come here because you're trying to remember which section have I and have I not been in. Ooh, mantiques. I'm a man, sorta. So I guess I should enjoy this blowtorch. Yes, I'm looking for a hat, see? Yes, you've done your duty, Junior. Definitely a lot of things to see. See? Saw. See, saw? I saw. Wow. Endless, endless rows. Man, I need to come here more often. They got a lot of good stuff in here. So many weird nooks and crannies. And a lot of interesting spaces. It starts to hurt your brain after a while. Just the sheer amount of stuff in here. It's like your eyeballs can only handle looking at a certain amount of stuff before your brain quits. Like, no more. Oh, my God. Goodness gracious. I wanted to go in this booth, but I am not walking under that ladder. That's bad luck. Oh, sweet mid-century chairs. Dang, those are great. I know I say this a lot, but it's really true. Coming and looking at places like this is a lot like time traveling. I try really hard not to just look at the stuff, but also think this was all owned by somebody. Like, whose phone was this? How many sweet old-timey teenage calls were made on this phone, you know? Did they talk about the moon landing on this thing? Did they talk about the release of that new movie, Star Wars? Like, whose furniture was all this? How many epic family stories have these things seen? How many sweet games were played with this chess set? What was it like living when this is the best picture you could get of Grandma? And how upset was she when she saw it? And did she like looking so mean? What was it like living in a time where that wasn't terrifying? Ooh, look at this old pulpit right here. Imagine going to a doctor who can't spell. Okay, I am very deep inside of this place now. It is very, very quiet. I'm starting to get weirded out in here. Mm. Even the speakers for the intercom that just announced that the store would be closing any minute are really far away. This place is cool, but I really hope I don't get locked in here overnight. Mm. Dang, I am pretty sure those are old vintage airport seats. Whoa, look at that boomerang coffee table. There's a lot of rad stuff in here, and I have a lot of fun looking at it, and I actually really like looking at it when I'm alone. I can... Feel free to make noise. No one's looking at me weird for talking to you guys. But the thing is, when it gets this quiet, when you're this deep in the basement, you start to realize a lot of this stuff was owned by dead people. Like I always say, I don't know much about the afterlife because I've never been there. I'm not superstitious, just regular stitious. But it starts to get just a little bit creepy. Almost like someone's watching us. Dude, how great would it be to have a giant jukebox like that? Or this beautiful statue, woman holding fish. She just really likes that fish. Wait, is that a woman? Looks like Peter Pan, kind of. It's Peter Pan holding a fish. That is my next living room goal. Ooh, all I know about these things is to never touch them, especially if they're glowing. Dang, there's a lot of stuff to see in here. I forgot how awesome this place is. You hear that? That's them starting to close up. So it's time to say goodbye to the beautiful ladies and skedaddle. Wait a minute, we can't leave without taking at least a little peek down at the basement. You know, the basement of the basement. If... If there were any ghosts in this place, I imagine this is definitely where they would be. Ooh, kind of freaky down here, especially since way down there, right in the center of your screen, all the way against the far wall, is a really terrifying mask. Ooh, why? Why? Yep, never mind, I'm uncomfortable. Ooh, just a spoonful of that basement was enough. This guy knows what I'm talking about. All right, now it's really time to make like a tree and get out of here. We'll save the upstairs for next time. Because for one thing, I really want to bring Allie up here. And for another thing, it's creepy up here alone. Dun, 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 dun. Let's bounce. Could you tell I have trouble dragging myself out of there? Okay. Since we are in Whittier, I can't leave town without at least taking a peek at a place they filmed one of my favorite movies of all time. Whittier High School, AKA Hill Valley High School from Back to the Future. Oh, they really cleaned this place up. Looks like there's still some school activities going on out here, so the gates are firmly locked and there's still students about. This just reminds me, I need to do another little round of Back to the Future spots. And it also 
reminds me to tell you guys that on March 25th, I'll be at WonderCon in Anaheim to participate in a panel about Back to the Future. I think it's called Back to the Future, answering the unanswered questions. I have no idea what those questions could be. And no idea if I'm the right person to answer the unanswered questions. But they're giving me a free pass to WonderCon, so how could I say no? All right, just gonna swing past one more place here next to the high school. Cause right over here around the corner from the gym is the house that they used in part two as Mr. Strickland's house. Look, there it is right there. That's the front porch where Marty picked up the newspaper and then there was that drive-by shooting. So whenever I'm over here, I have to drive by and say, hey Strickland! Just part of my routine. All right, and now that that's done, I really gotta go back and get back to preparing the work for those taxes. But you know what? We've seen quite a few things today. And we got to introduce George to uh, Oceanic Gardens, so I think we've done our duty. We can go home and sleep well. See you guys real soon, because coming up really, really soon, we've got some traveling to do. Until next time, bye-bye. <laughs>